Hey, it's great to have you all with me again. And today I've, I've brought you to another of my favorite natural lands preserves. This is called the Bryn Coed Preserve in Kimberton. And uh, it's magnificent. And there's a number of plants I wanna share with you. I wanna show you some meadows and some trees. Um, so I'm just gonna introduce you to a couple of plants right here. The family that you're seeing so prominently is actually aster family, daisy family. And as you look here in front of me, you're seeing a really wonderful example of a sunflower relative, um, clearly has those daisy petals. And we're gonna talk about the nature of these flowers. When you look at this flower, it turns out it's not a flower. This is actually a collection of flowers, or what we sometimes call a composite flower. So when you look at that, you think it's a flower with petals, but it's not. What you're seeing is actually a collection of flowers in the center, small flowers called disc flowers, and then another collection of flowers that go around the edge called ray flowers, what you think of as petals. So this is a really beautiful uh, member of the, of the aster family. These are bright yellow. You can think about plants like black-eyed Susans and other plants in the family. I also have a morning glory here, which is really great. This is actually called the ivy-leaved morning glory. It's another ipomea. So here's another cousin of sweet potatoes and the morning glories I grow on my porch. The ivy-leaved morning glory is called ipomea heteracea. And you can see that beautiful morning glory flower in violet blue. And these are its leaves, these wonderful ivy-like vine leaves. And that's why it's called common name, ivy-leaved. And we'll see that its species name, Heteraceae, is also referring to an ivy. The other aster that's out here that's really beautiful, I'm gonna walk over, this is a wild aster. So these are wild plants, but they're so beautiful that people grow these in their garden. So this is actually the New England aster or New York aster. It's got beautiful purple color and these yellow centers. But once again, there you go. You can see this is another collection of flowers. And when I say that, yes, there's a whole bunch of them, but I mean each one of these is not one flower, but many. So let me pick one and just emphasize that again. So focus, there we go. This in the center in yellow are the disc flowers. Those are the reproductive flowers that actually bees interact with. What you think of as petals in purple all around it, those are the ray flowers. Those are advertisements. They're sterile and they themselves can't reproduce. So this beautiful purple aster with a yellow center is a great example of that collection of flowers that represents how the asteraceae have structured their flower parts. Probably the most common fall wildflower you're going to see in these parts, especially as we get into October and a lot of things actually are done for the season. This is white snake root, Eupatorium rugosum. It's got a great story. It's another aster and it doesn't have big petals around it like the coneflower or daisies or black eyed Susans. But it's in the Asteraceae, has flowers kind of like goldenrod. So I just want you to see that because you're going to see so much of this snow white Eupatorium, sometimes called bone set or white snake root. It's a really common flower of the margins of woodlands. I even have a lot of it in my backyard. You can see quite a lot of it growing out here in the woods.
This this blue flower here is another aster. It's the Asteraceae, but it's a blue aster flower. And again, it's a cousin of lettuce. But this is called chicory, Cycorium intibus. Chicory is also known as corn flower, and you often find it growing on the edges of cornfields. Chicory is used for its root. The root can be harvested and roasted and ground up, and you can use that ground chicory root to make a coffee-like beverage. And in New Orleans, the coffee is still served with about 20% chicory root. You can buy at the grocery store a canned coffee called Louisiane that's a blend still of chicory and coffee mixed together. So here's your beautiful blue cornflower. I think there's a Crayola crayon called cornflower for the color that's just this very beautiful aster blue. Again, you can see the ray flowers on the outside and the disc flowers in the center. So that's your Cycorium intibus in the Asteraceae or chicory, also known as cornflower. The asters, asters are just so prominent out here at this time of year. And here you can see, you know, not only the goldenrod and the, the chicory and all the other beautiful asters, but just looking at the white wood asters here on the forest floor. And then right in here with them, this beautiful little goldenrod. This is the blue stemmed goldenrod, uh, just really one of the great solidagos, but rather than the great big tall goldenrods, that we encounter when we're out in the meadows. This is a, a much shorter um, blue stem, and, and it really does have, if you look, it has this wonderful dark purple stem uh, that, that's sort of the distinguishing characteristic and sort of a wand of flowers at the top. Those are still daisy family, still asters. And uh, we have some really nice zigzag goldenrod that we're planting in the woods in our nature area at school.